And then we decided to build a conference that doesn't have a theme. It's estate planning, next generation, coin investing, arts, philanthropy, marrying wealth, more importantly, divorcing it. And it was a huge success. Silicon Valley have shown us that, but you know, that's not the only place you have access to you know, startups and technologies. You need to build a community if you really want to get the right people there. We need a lot of new wealth and old wealth. And we think that they should talk to each other more because the old wealth can help the new wealth with what to do next. And the old wealth would probably want to invest with the new wealth because normally entrepreneurs never rest. They're working on the next venture, next venture, they're at the cutting edge and they just prove themselves. 63% of family offices are actively using direct investment. Families are very, I think, fast to check what's going on. So you know what, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Welcome to Forging the Future, and I'm here in Austin, Texas at the Texas Venture Forum and Gala, sitting down with Denny Cherid, the founder of DC Finance. Denny, hey. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I had the opportunity to attend one of your events a few weeks back in Houston. Yeah. Very interesting. Thank you. So you've been involved in this world for quite a while now. Mm -hmm. um, what does DC Finance do? do exactly? You organize events, you connect with high net worth individuals. Yeah, um, so DC Finance uh, is nothing uh, that we, uh, uh, well, it, it, we're not in DC, nor do we do finance. So we have a very bad name for what we do. Uh, we should have choose, uh, chosen another one. So DC are my initials. Finance really, because when we started with institutional investment conferences and corporate finance and financial stuff. And then 16 years ago, I sat with um, two next gens of very prominent families in Israel. And we figured there's nothing neutral for families. You can go to a UBS conference and ski in the Alps and eat the best food, but you're gonna hear what UBS wants you to hear, which is not what you need to hear. And then we decided to build a conference that doesn't have a theme. It's estate planning, next generation, coin investing, arts, philanthropy, marrying wealth, more importantly, divorcing it, investments, everything you can think about. And, uh, and it was a huge success. We did it in Israel 16 years ago. So we have been you know, doing it for many years. So today we're putting on, we're building communities. It's not to, 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 to we're not producers of conferences. It's what I always explain. You know, if you want to do a conference for doctors, get topics, get the doctors. Family offices, you need to build a community if you really want to get the right people there. And so we've been building these communities in 16 or 17 cities now. Uh, most in North America, US, Canada, UAE, Israel, uh, London. And we have another uh, uh, club that we launched in, in September, which I, we need to talk about separately because mm -hmm. I want you there. Um, chaired by Lisa Silverstein, uh, the Silverstein family that owns the World Trade Center, where the idea there was that one, because we're so global, we can bring people together that will never meet otherwise, and two, because we're very tech-oriented, we, we came originally from Israel, we always knew it was an edge, we meet a lot of people like yourself, actually. So we meet a lot of new wealth and old wealth, and we think that they should talk to each other more because the old wealth can help the new wealth with what to do next, you know, governance, uh, um, you know, legacy. And the old wealth would probably want to invest with the new wealth because normally entrepreneurs never rest. They're working on the next venture, next venture, they're at the cutting edge and they just prove themselves. So that's what we do. So we have the club where families are members of. Uh, we meet at people's homes, the Silverstein, Spielberg, 7-Eleven uh, in Dallas two weeks ago, uh, Crown in, 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 in Chicago soon. And we have the conferences which uh, are all around the world. Interesting. So you started in Israel. Were you? That's. Did you live there? Yeah. Okay. And then you immigrated and here at some point, or are you still? You still? Is Israel still like home base? No, I live in New York. New York. Uh, yeah. We've been. Uh, uh, um, uh, my first conference outside of Israel was 2013. So we've mm. been here for quite a while. So even when I lived there, you know, it was back and forth all the time. But in 2019, we decided to move here uh, just to uh, get COVID and understand we could have been basically anywhere on the planet. <laughs> yeah. But it was nice. We moved to Rye in Westchester, which is very nice. And uh, yeah, and I'm enjoying myself mm. here. Yeah, I had the impression that you were actually in Texas because you know I saw you at the Houston event. You've been here at the Texas Gala, and, but you're based in New York. 
So you help family offices and high net worth individuals network. I, I love that idea of basically you know, combining that old with the new because um, they both can learn from each other, right? Um, and I, I even see now a lot of family offices may have been investing in real estate, may have been investing in oil and gas, especially here in Texas, right? And trying to get them to consider, you know, venture as an asset class or invest in technology, even though there's always been a lot of tech in Texas, right? You know, um, and everyone's seen what is possible with investments in technology companies, you know, Silicon Valley have shown us that, but, you know, that's not the only place you have access to, you know, startups and technologies. But they don't always understand how to evaluate those. It's not real estate. It's not oil and gas. So, you know, what what is this new thing you're talking about? Um, one of our startups actually is a Israeli startup called Flometrica, and they figured out how to do a, a lower cost, more accurate, you know, at home urinalysis um, test device. Mm -hmm. Right and. Um, you know, I imagine you know, an, an older family office is, how do I, how do I actually you know, evaluate the potential of that product, that, that invention, that market, right? And, and it's hard, you, but the way to do it is partnering, you know, which was my approach with SoftTech is, like, hey, we're the ones that can evaluate the tech, get under the hood and inform the decision making. And because otherwise, yeah, it just looks like magic, right? But is it real, right? Uh, so I like that collaborative yeah. approach. And you were in Houston just making new connections. And, you know, I, I mean, have you been in Houston for a while or is that a new location for We've you? We've been in Texas for a while. We, 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 so out of uh, six destinations, soon seventh with Silicon Valley uh, in the U.S., to our t uh, Texas, uh, Dallas and Houston. Mm. And we've been there for four years or five years. Okay. So we, the, the conference you've attended in Houston, I think, was the fourth one by now. Mm. Um, and we, 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 we like to uh, penetrate the city, right? So uh, every conference is very local. So, and how do you do that? You build this variety of topics, as I've mentioned. And, and by the way, I like to say there are millions of investment conferences, zillions of investment conferences. They probably will not go to most, maybe attend one or two. And I even take into consideration even Davos and, and, and Milken and Salt, whatever you're talking about, they may attend if they can. If not, not a big deal. But when you talk about things that matter, when you bring the son of Robin Williams to speak about mental health, when you bring the, one of the largest families in Dallas to speak about marrying into wealth and she brings her husband or, or the Silversteins about 9-11 from angles you've never heard, when you go that intimate, you're getting the families. So our thing is, you know, to build, uh, to talk, you know, on, on many different topics, to bring exceptional speakers. By the way, in the last quarter, we've had Spielberg, Crown, Pritzker, 7-Eleven, uh, 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 Firestone, lots of great names. But then how do you penetrate the city? How do you market to families? You don't go on billboards, hey, I'm here. So we build partnerships with different kinds of groups, philanthropic groups, associations, CPAs, legal firms, you know, and that's how we get the locals to come. So, and after a while, it becomes a community. So in Houston, we've been, that's how we started, uh, uh, with Goose Society and, and Houston Angel Network and Texas Medical Center and the Jewish Federation and Tiger 21 and all these guys. And we build this group that doesn't really compete with each other, but all have access to different families. And it was a win-win for everybody. And then it just keeps on growing. So we've been in Texas for a while and uh, we love it. You know, I go for the barbecue, man. <laughs> I really plan the, 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 the destinations, the places I really want to go to. It's really fun. <laughs> you know? Well, there's a lot to experience in the world. So it's working. I mean, the, 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 the older families and the, and the newer, uh, they, are they? Absolutely. Yeah. So that's the club thing. So, yeah. so yeah, yeah. And first of all, you see families uh, when they're in a small group that they trust, they lose all their defenses, right? Mm -hmm. They have walls upon walls because everybody wants something from them all of their life. Throughout life, if you're wealthy, some, you don't even know if the person you're dating is dating you for what reason. So... When they are, when they feel safe, they take those layers uh, out, and, and then you see real people that actually have a need to communicate with people without that, you know, protection. So uh, we absolutely see that we have a WhatsApp group, and you see the old, you know, the the old money and the new money. They're all getting together and hug and kiss, and, and we start to see more and more of that. So um, it's definitely uh, actually again coming back to the Silversteins. It's a great example because. Lisa, the daughter of Larry, is married to Tal. Tal is my friend. That's where he started. He's from Israel. And he's a tech guy. And he married real estate. 
and his new money and their old money. And he brought that to the mix and now several floors at the World Trade Center are actually a Silver Tech Ventures, which is an amazing idea that they had, which was let's do a VC with our capital mostly, but the companies will sit in our building, which would allow us to get to know them way better. So if you're sitting in my building, even for free, I'll get to know you in six months better than any other fund. And I'll know if I should invest with you, I shouldn't, you're a good person, you're not that great person. So it's a great, it's an interesting marriage between new and, and old technology and real estate. So Interesting. Yeah, that's what we like also about our studio model, because you bring the founders in and you get to work with them. And then you also get to work with their technology and get under the hood and understand that better, yeah. too. So I'm hearing a lot of that theme today at the Venture Gala of people going smaller rather than bigger. Like, let's not just have a big event and put a bunch of people in seats and expect magic to happen. If you can actually get people, the right people in a smaller setting can be more impactful. Yep, absolutely. I like that. So, um, so they're, they're investing in companies and housing them in their buildings. And what type of companies are, would those be um, that they're, that they're with, trying to With Silvertech in particular, I think they go uh, mostly early stage and different sectors. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, some of it, it has to do with uh, things that they understand from uh, 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 real estate. So uh, yeah. that kind of technology. But they have... Uh, um, Variety of, of companies from different sectors that they just, you know, like e-commerce, mm -hmm. lots of stuff like that. But it's really interesting because they got, the story is that um, uh, Charlie Federman, who's uh, an investor, that I think he invested in some of the biggest companies, Checkpoint. And he was, uh, and, 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 and Tal ran into him uh, at the Wall Trade. He was going to a meeting and he said, let's, you know, I like, I heard about you. Why don't we do a fund and, you know, do something? And he said... Uh, no, nah, I'm retiring, I'm done. And he said, you know what, maybe meet Larry. And, and then he went to meet Larry. And he, t he said the same thing, I'm retiring. And Larry said, you're what? <laughs> I'm retiring. He said, do I need to Google that word? I don't understand what you're saying. What do you mean? <laughs> and they said, well, I, I will just give you an office here. Just sit here and let's try to do something. And, and, and the rest is history. Yeah, I mean, I was inspired just by people that, I mean, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, when, when do you really retire, right? I mean, retire sounds like death to me. But, exactly. <laughs> and some entrepreneurs, you know, um, I'm talking about even the, the old, not even, but the old school, you know, Sam uh, Zell, um, uh, Larry Silverstein. I mean, you see people that are 90 plus years old come to the office every single day and work. And you know what? That's a real entrepreneur, a real entrepreneur is not doing it for the money. For the money, they could have retired three decades ago. Mm -hmm. they, they're passionate about it. Exactly. You know? It's inspiring that you can actually, that I could continue to do this for 30 more years, right? I, I had an opportunity to meet um, William Shatner, actually. That's why I was in New York. Wow. And I just find him very entrepreneurial. I really enjoyed his book. I never really read a Shatner book before. I'm a Trekkie. I grew up with Star Trek and everything. I like Star Wars. I like, I'm a sci-fi guy. But I had a chance to meet him. Um, in, in his dressing room with about nine or ten other people, and I had a chance to sit right by him, right? And, um, but, I mean, here's a guy that he's writing books, he's still doing movies, he just has a, he has a movie out right now, a documentary called uh, You Can Call Me Bill, and it was crowdfunded. It's a new movie concept. I hate, basically, it's a, a Legion M is a, a company that essentially crowdfunds movies, and then they get made by his fan-based movies, right? Very so, cool. Um, but he's always, you know, you look at Priceline, you look at, you know, um, the guy gets into the space capsules. I mean, you know, it's, um, and he's not willing, he, he's always willing to try something new, and he pushes himself to do that. And that's what I think entrepreneurship is about and really life in general. Yeah. Right? You know, so um, I think good op entrepreneurs are, are, always, are always doing that, right? Um, so what do you here for at the Texas Gala? Just to learn? Um, so I was invited to talk about uh, the, the family office space. I, I'm actually invited to, to, to different events that are completely not in that segment mm. in order to explain that segment, how to reach the family offices. I spoke once at the uh, Stem Cell World Summit in, in Boca or something. I mean, I couldn't even pronounce the names, the titles of the other panels. Like I was the only guy in the room who didn't know anything about what's going on, <laughs> but I was, my job was to explain those, you know, serious pharma guys, 
how do you approach a family office? It's not a VC. You don't do another pitch and bore them to, her, to, to death. You need to be sexy and exciting and, and tell the, and, and stress certain elements that many don't even think they need to stress. You know, and many times I'm as an ex journalist, I'm getting those white papers, not white papers, I'm getting those speeches and there's so much interesting stuff going on in paragraph three that should be in paragraph one because nobody's gonna survive paragraph two if, if, if you don't get them, you know, excited. And family offices are people that sometimes you need to get excited. I mean, yeah, you go after those who understand pharma in the family office world, that's your, 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 your choir. But uh, beyond that, there are people who don't really get it as much as the professionals, but they would invest in you if Our they like your story. Yeah, well, I'm with you. I mean, there's a military term called um, uh, uh, BLUF, bluff. Bottom line up front. Right. So you put exactly. the point at the top of the email. But our family office is interested in venture because a lot of them are PE based. They they have a different mindset. They've been investing in real estate. They've been investing in oil and gas. And venture class is a scary thing for them, you know, and they, I, they or a risky thing. And they think, well, I can put my money in the bank account, get five percent. I can, you know, I I have family offices where we're investing in pre seed, and you know, six months later they want to know my markup, and it's like, well. <laughs> I've planted a seed. It's this high, and you're asking me how many apples I'm going to get out of it. It's not. It's not a flipping kind of PE kind of deal, right? So, are you seeing a more understanding of like venture in these family offices? So, more more willingness to take some uh, some risk in their portfolio to to you know toward venture. I would say absolutely. I would say first of all, there's research that shows that uh, we can uh, share it with you. Uh, uh, that shows more and more. Uh, family office wealth is going into uh, 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 technology, whether through funds or whether as direct investing. So really? that's okay. that's for sure is happening. And there, are, I mean, it, it was happening way before everything, but especially in the last year or two, when 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 the the, the, the situation in the world became so unstable, and you don't want to invest in many things that could be influenced by whatever goes on in with Iran. Or when real estate is no longer a safe haven, where inflation goes on, it, it basically pushes them more into saying, you know what, I might as well take a chance with these guys. Mm. And, and, and you see that, uh, and we see that all the time. So we see them absolutely diversifying. Some do direct, some prefer uh, uh, to, to have somebody else manage it for them, but definitely. I, I, I don't even know families that don't have something in technology. And... Now the numbers, which I'm about to, to share with you, there's, it's funny because uh, 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 my friend Ron Diamond from Chicago says, uh, 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 quoting a Harvard research that says there's 65, right now there's tre 10 or so trillion dollars at their hands. 65 is about to uh, transfer with the baby boomers to the next gen. Another research shows a different number, but by the way, nobody knows their numbers because yeah, that's kind of how it works. So mm -hmm. nobody knows. Even you, though you hear read Goldman Sachs research, I don't think anybody knows exactly the numbers because you know maybe the IRS does. Um, so um, and and the, and 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 he, he was saying this this kind of wealth is more than the private equity and venture world combined mm -hmm. soon in in like the next fifteen years as the uh, and that money is going to go to the next generation and they'll be like okay now what do we do with all of that. But and the, they are more into technology than their fathers and grandparents. That's so. the uh, that's the thinking, right? Or the the assumption. And I I follow the argument. Um, but then there's a, another part where it's like, well, are they really? Because you, I, I worry that the 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 transfer is going to happen, and they're going to be, well, I don't want to lose this money. They're going to switch into more of the retention mode, and I'm just going to keep doing what dad used to do and what grandpa used to do and keep my money doing this because we know this works, and I'm not going to try anything new, right? Where, you know, that's really what we, what we are hoping that they would, you know, branch out a little bit, take a little bit more risk. But um, do you think they, that they're going, but you, you, you believe they might? Yeah, I mean, look, no, nobody's telling them to take everything and risk it. Sure. Right? So, but there's always going to be some percentage that's going to be deployed to technology. And, uh, and, 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 and we see that interest. So, um, but I see the human nature. Um, well, first of all, the, you know, I got you know, into Bitcoin early, right? Uh, you know, I would tell a lot of my friends about it. 
and but there was still resistance to even put like a partial amount of money or any amount of money into something like that, right? Even at, like a diversification portfolio. And I see like venture for family offices being like, okay, well, you're not gonna, of course, bet the whole portfolio on venture deals, right? But you know, allocate five or ten percent or whatever the number is. Is there a percentage that they're allocating toward venture in general? Or I think is it talking just- about like uh, we, uh, some of them are even would have. Uh, um, uh, I, I actually well, I should have the numbers somewhere here. I forgot how much it was exactly, but I happen to have this here okay, because there's great. so many r- research pieces. Mm. First of all, I'll tell you, I know many families that are in blockchain. Mm. I know families that know blockchain better than most blockchain entrepreneurs. That mm. they know it inside out, what to touch, what to avoid, what they do like amazingly well. And I know some that don't know anything about it, but they, they have some Bitcoin. They don't, and they even tell me, yeah, well, we bought some just to have, you know. Uh, so I see, it if, I, I do see, you know, in 2018, because we're a very tech-oriented group to begin with coming out of Israel, uh, we were doing a blockchain digital assets family office conferences dedicated just for that. Mm. I brought the SEC, BNY Mellon, Fida. They were packed with families that came to see. Families are very, I think, fast to check what's going on uh, uh, when a new trend starts. Cannabis, blockchain, Opportunity Zone. They were the first ones always. So, uh, and regarding your, your, your question, I mean, I mean, the research is, is always, you know, there's, there's, there's some, some, some research that even, even is, not, um, is not the same numbers, but uh, just to show you a couple of examples, family offices are increasingly, in, increasingly investing in private assets, including VC due to the economic shifts in, uh, uh, geopolitical concerns. This is EY. Uh, um, um, private equity is evident. 38% of family offices increasing their allocations. By the way, the size of investments is growing with the years. Um, 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 26% invest in private equity, indicating significant investment in VC and related areas. This is by Goldman Sachs. Um, uh, 41% of family offices plan to increase their private equity investments. That's also Goldman Sachs. So uh, 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 high direct investments. 63% of family offices are actively using direct investment. This is wealthmanagement.com. So, and, and no, you know, it, this is not precise, you yeah. know, science. It's not exact science. You know, people, like you say, might say something, but not do uh, at mm-hmm. the end of the day. But I think they are definitely looking. I mean, from my experience alone, I, I've seen funds raise capital at my conferences, at my dinners. And many times it depends on the presenter. So I had this company, the guys on the, he raised millions with us. And I think he's on the spectrum. I think he said, he told me that. So the guy was so crazily uh, uh, going after, he sat with every family, took their notes and wrote it down. And so any, any follow up. And he managed to raise a lot. So sometimes it's, 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 the, it's the, of course, they like what he was presenting, but he followed up well. Many times I see companies and the valuation is wrong. So people are interested, but they're saying, I'm not going to do that. And I've seen first-time funds, even I had an agrotech first-time fund, which is a suicide. I mean, what could be worse to take such a narrow area, agrotech, and be first-time? I mean, you might as well go and look for a job at Wendy's. <laughs> and they raised because if anybody can give you a chance, it's families. Because they saw he's a go-getter. His father is a family. He's not going to ruin his name for nothing. And he's going to try hard for me now. And I'm going to get him a great valuation. So you know what? I'm, I'll, 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 I'll give it a shot. Well, that's encouraging. Because I've been hearing the opposite. And it's, you know, it's like, well, that's not good. But uh, I'm, I'm happy to hear it. Yeah. Uh, your family offices, uh, they're still like, I mean, obviously, a lot of them are U.S. based, um, but some of them are in Israel. Are there others uh, worldwide? Or as we are regional, so uh, every conference we do is a regional uh, uh, conference. So Canada, mm. UK, which is for us Europe, um, um, Israel, and and the UAE, and everyone you know has a different mentality and different. For instance, the UAE are very slow. They have deep pockets, but they want you to, f- they want to know you first. They want you to get to know them for all of that. And I once told them, so how do you do early, uh, early inv- investing? <laughs> yeah. And they said, we don't. Yeah. And we go with them. We yeah, find it that. takes two years to, to, to yeah. build the relationship and the company's already moved on. Right? Yeah, but that's also a strategy. They're saying, mm-hmm. you know what, I, I, I prefer to pay more, mm-hmm. but on more 
things that I feel comfortable with. I'm not taking chances. What about okay. in the UK? I mean, that's a different market. There's the Mittelstand and, you know, there's a, a lot of uh, startups are backed and then chase the government dollars. And then, of course, when they get to a certain side, they, they have to come to the US, right, in order to, to grow. But um, are, are there family offices in the UK? Yeah, yeah. definitely. I, um, I don't have much experience to see how they invest. I feel like they are more hesitant a little bit than, than the US. I think the US is way more direct. You know where you stand, the emails are shorter, which is very good. Uh, uh, um, yeah, it's funny, you know, when I go to Switzerland, sometimes the guy's name is uh, uh, Vincent Van Horen uh, Gustav, mm. and his email address is going to be Vincent.Van.Hausen. And I'm telling them, guys, in, in the States, even if your name is Jerry, they're going to do J. <laughs> yeah. You know? No, you're going to respect. So, so the culture is a little bit, I think, I think it's more complex to work with these guys. It takes them more time, but maybe I'm completely wrong. I mean, out of all of our conferences, we have only one in the UK, but I always felt they were harder to, to, to get to a, a deal. Even when you look at the sponsors, you know, when you look at the US, EY or whatever, uh, if they like what you do, they'll, they're in. The same EY in London would drive you through hell and back before they would, you know, put in... Well, there are cultural differences. It's a cultural and, difference. And yeah. country differences. Yeah. I saw a meme recently, you know, the U.S. innovates, uh, China imitates, and the huh. U.K. regulates. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. So, yeah. And it's funny because it's true, I think. But, uh, well, that's, that's, that's interesting. Anything new that you've seen recently that uh, future trends in family offices? Um, what, what is the future in family office? Uh, I think they're going to become more and more prominent. And, 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 and by the way, you see all the big guys, BlackRock and all these guys that would never even look at them. I mean, they do like this and 10 institutionals stand in line. They're starting to have a, 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 a practice a, a departments that just deal with families because they understand that these guys are, are serious. They have a lot of wealth. They control the companies. They're liquid. They can make an instant decision. And so I think they will be more and more involved. And you know what? It's not only that. It's not only uh, money. It's smart money. The, the, uh, and sometimes what triggers them is, 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 is crazy things. So like this family invested in a pharmaceutical company that presented in my, uh, at our Miami conference, and she never did pharma before, ever. So it's like ridiculous. I mean, I mean, I mean it's a 10-year lockdown. You've got to know what you're doing. It's, you know, it's not something that's it's easy to get. It's difficult, yeah. It's not a SaaS business, yeah. And she invested, you know what? because the CEO, the founder was a woman mm -hmm. and she liked her energy and everything. And then, and, and which is crazy, you know, uh, it's not a, 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 even a single family office that, you know, follows the, you know, investment committees and ideas. And then she tells me after a while, remember these guys I invested in? Well, I just closed their biggest deal ever uh, with Mount Sinai Hospital, I connected them. So some of these families would become very crucial. And let me tell you something else. Well, VCs have a playbook, they don't. So they might, they might, they're not going to give you the whole rundown of all those checking boxes process. They might fall in love with you because of one, two, three things. They'll check, you know, maybe with another family if they invest with you. And what VCs sometimes miss is that you need to create relationship with these guys. And what happens is if after you, if you call them after two years and you haven't been in touch, hey, we're doing another round, many of them might tell you to, you know. But many times when you need that additional round and you need quick money, the VCs might give you a hard time. Okay, we need to go through the entire process again and do it. And a family would call, hey, George, I need just a million because there's an opportunity coming. I need to quickly make it. Will you be with us? And then they will do that second you know, round with you without giving you all the headaches. So there's a lot that's so a very difference. interesting about family. Yeah, there's a difference. Well, thanks for sharing. Uh, very interesting conversation. Do you want to know more about that? hub that you're building. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, we'll we'll uh, definitely coordinate a separate tonight. call and talk about that. All right. Well, enjoy the gala and we'll, uh, we'll talk you. again soon. Thank you.